Let's get right into it. Number 10. The TGN-1412 Disaster Imagine signing up for a medical trial thinking you'll make some easy money. Instead, you end up looking like a blueberry from Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. In 2006 at a London hospital, eight healthy young men signed up to test a new drug called TGN-1412. Scientists told them it was super safe. They'd already tested it on monkeys using doses 500 times stronger. Within minutes of getting the drug, these guys started screaming in pain. Their heads began swelling up like balloons. Their immune systems went completely haywire, as if their bodies declared war on themselves. Organs started shutting down. One guy's head swelled up so much that nurses started calling him Elephant Man. The drug was supposed to help people with arthritis and leukemia. Instead, it nearly killed six perfectly healthy men. Two volunteers got lucky. They received a placebo. The survivors still have problems today. Their immune systems are permanently damaged. One guy can't walk in the sun without his fingers and toes swelling up. Scientists later figured out why it went so wrong. Human immune systems are far more sensitive than monkey immune systems. The dose that was safe for monkeys was like a nuclear bomb for humans. This disaster changed how drug testing works forever. Now they start with incredibly tiny doses and test one person at a time instead of all at once. Number 9. The Blood Swapping Experiment Imagine being able to reverse aging just by sharing blood with someone younger. In 2005, scientists decided to try exactly that with mice. They took an old mouse and a young mouse and did something called parabiosis. They literally sewed them together, connecting their blood vessels so they'd share the same blood supply. After a few weeks, the old mouse started acting young again. Its muscles got stronger, its brain worked better, and its organs started repairing themselves. It was like the old mouse had found the fountain of youth, but the young mouse got the short end of the stick. It started aging rapidly, its muscles getting weaker. The young mouse was an unwilling sacrifice for the old one's youth. Scientists were excited about the potential for aging research, but they were also freaked out by the ethical implications. Imagine rich people trying to harvest young people's blood. It sounds like the plot of a dystopian movie. Some companies even tried to commercialize this, charging thousands for young blood transfusions. The FDA had to step in and stop them from creating a real-life vampire economy. Number 8. The Cat Telephone Back in 1929, two Princeton scientists wanted to know how our brains process sound. Their solution was straight out of a horror movie. They decided to turn a living cat into a telephone receiver. They took a sedated cat, opened its skull, and connected wires directly to its auditory nerve. The other end of these wires went to an amplifier. When they spoke into the cat's ears, the amplifier would play back what they said. They turned this poor cat's brain into a biological microphone. The cat was alive during all of this, just sedated, and it actually worked. This experiment is now a classic case study in ethics classes on what happens when scientific curiosity goes way too far. Number 7. The Landis Facial Expression Experiment Back in 1924, psychologist Carney Landis wanted to study how people's faces change when they're upset. He started by drawing lines on people's faces with burnt cork so he could track their expressions. First, he showed them mild things like photos. Then he ramped things up by making them smell ammonia and touch live frogs. The final test was bringing out a live rat and ordering the participants to decapitate it. This wasn't some edgy online challenge. This was supposedly legitimate research. Most of the participants were psychology students who likely thought they signed up for something far less traumatic. The most messed up part is that many of them actually did it, not because they wanted to, but because an authority figure in a lab coat told them to. For those who refused, Landis would grab the rat and do it himself, right in front of them. Landis claimed he was studying facial expressions, but what he actually proved was how far people will go when someone in authority tells them to do something horrible. Today, this experiment is basically the we don't talk about that of psychology. Number 6. The Little Albert Experiment Imagine you're a baby, just living your life. Then one day, scientists show up and decide to play mind games with you. That's what happened to a 9-month-old baby nicknamed Little Albert in 1920. First, they showed Albert a cute white rat. Just like any normal baby, he loved it. He wanted to pet it and play with it. But then, every time they showed Albert the rat, they'd make a horrifying loud noise right behind his head by smashing a hammer against a steel bar. They kept doing this over and over. Eventually, poor little Albert started freaking out every time he even saw the rat. The fear generalized. The kid became terrified of anything white and fluffy. A Santa Claus mask became terrifying. A fur coat became nightmare fuel. The scientists conditioned a deep-seated fear into a child, but they never undid what they did to him. They just left him traumatized and called it a day. It's like installing a virus in someone's brain and then throwing away the antivirus software. The worst part is we don't know what happened to little Albert. He just disappeared into history, probably spending the rest of his life avoiding pet stores and cotton balls. 
Number 5. The Monster Study Back in 1939, a scientist named Wendell Johnson wanted to figure out what causes stuttering, so he took 22 orphans and tried to give half of them a stutter. These kids were split into two groups. The first group was told they spoke beautifully and were praised for their speech. The second group was told they were developing a stutter and were constantly criticized for every tiny speech imperfection every single day. The kids in the second group, many of whom had no prior speech issues, developed severe speech problems and lost their confidence. Many of them struggled with speech and self-esteem issues for the rest of their lives. The experiment became known as the Monster Study for good reason. The university kept this study secret for 60 years. When it finally came out in 2001, they had to issue a formal apology and pay over $900,000 to the surviving test subjects. Number 4. The Fernald School's Science Club Imagine you're a kid and someone tells you you've been picked for a special science club at school. You get extra treats and special breakfast cereals just for eating them. That's what researchers told the kids at the Fernald School in Massachusetts back in the 1940s. These weren't regular cereals. The researchers had laced the food with radioactive iron and calcium. Radioactive breakfast. It's like someone replaced the prize in your cereal box with a tiny nuclear reactor. These weren't just any kids. The Fernald School was for children with mental disabilities. The scientists specifically chose them because they thought nobody would ask too many questions. They didn't tell the parents what was happening. Instead, they sent permission slips for a nutrition study. The kids got special prizes and extra attention for eating their radioactive meals. The truth didn't come out until the 1990s, almost 50 years later. By then, many of the kids had grown up having no idea they'd been part of one of the darkest chapters in medical research. The scientists claimed the radiation levels were low and harmless, but the effects of radiation can show up decades later. Number 3. The Well of Despair In the 1950s, scientist Harry Harlow wasn't satisfied with just separating baby monkeys from their mothers. He wanted to see if he could create depression from scratch. So he built the Well of Despair, a stainless steel chamber shaped like an upside-down pyramid. The walls were smooth and sloped, making it impossible to climb. Baby monkeys were dropped into total darkness at the bottom of this pit, alone, for up to one year. No light, no touch, no companionship, just cold metal walls. After just a few days, the monkeys stopped moving. They'd just curl up into tiny balls and stare into nothing. When they were finally taken out, they were permanently changed. They wouldn't eat, wouldn't play, and wouldn't interact with other monkeys. Some would just rock back and forth, hugging themselves. Harlow had succeeded. He'd created depression in a lab. The experiment was so disturbing that even Harlow's own research assistant quit saying I cannot see any justification for this kind of research. This experiment crosses so many ethical lines that it will never be repeated. Number 2. The Demon Core In 1945, scientists at Los Alamos were playing with a plutonium core meant for a nuclear bomb. And when I say playing, I mean literally poking it with a screwdriver. This chunk of plutonium was nicknamed the Demon Core for good reason. The core was a softball-sized sphere of plutonium. To make it go critical, which is science talk for really bad news, all you had to do was surround it with a shell of beryllium. Physicist Harry Daglian decided to build these shells around the core by hand, one brick at a time. At night, alone in the lab, a brick slipped. That's all it took. The core went critical, flooding the room with lethal radiation. Daglian died 25 days later, but the core wasn't done. Nine months later, another scientist named Louis Slotin decided to show off. He was doing something called tickling the dragon's tail. This involved holding the beryllium shell apart with nothing more than a flathead screwdriver. The screwdriver slipped. The shell dropped. Another burst of deadly blue radiation shot through the room. Sloten died nine days later, his body cooking from the inside out. The demon core was never used in a bomb. Number 1. The Two-Headed Dog Experiment Back in the 1950s, Soviet scientist Vladimir Demikov decided to play Dr. Frankenstein. He took a puppy's head and front legs and surgically attached them to the neck of a fully grown German shepherd. This isn't an urban legend. There's actual footage. The bigger dog's heart and lungs kept both heads alive. Both heads could move independently, see, and even drink milk at the same time. The small head would even lick milk off the nose of the bigger head. They were fully conscious and aware. The smaller head would even try to nip at scientists when they gave injections to the main body. Demikov was trying to figure out organ transplants. His work, as gruesome as it was, accidentally helped pave the way for modern heart transplants. But the dogs didn't live long. Most survived only a few days, with the longest making it to just 29 days. Demikov created about 20 of these two-headed dogs. Even during the height of the Cold War, when everything was fair game, other scientists refused to repeat this experiment. Modern scientists have the tools to do this far better today, but absolutely nobody wants to. That's all for today. I'll be making similar videos in the future. Subscribe to see them.